Odyssey, Book 4. The Argument. Received now in the Spartan court, Telemachus prefers report to Menelaus of the throng of wooers with him, and they're wrong. Atreides tells the Greeks retreat, and doth a prophecy repeat that Proteus made, by which he knew his brother's death, and then doth show how with Calypso lived the sire of his young guest. The wooers conspire their prince's death, whose treachery known Penelope in tears doth drown, whom Pallas by a dream doth cheer, and in similitude appear of fair Iphthima, known to be the sister of Penelope. Another argument, Delta. Here of the sire the son doth hear, the wooers conspire, the mother's fear. <clears throat> in Lacedaemon now, the nurse of Wales, these two arrived and founded festivals with mighty concourse, the renowned king, his son and daughter jointly marrying. Elector's daughter he did give his son, strong Megapenthes, who his life begun by Menelaus's bond made whom he knew in years when Helen could no more renew an issue like divine Hermione, who held in all fair form as high degree as golden Venus. Her he married now to great Achilles' son, who was by vow betrothed to her at Troy. And thus the gods to constant loves give nuptial periods, whose state here passed the Myrmidon's rich town, of which she shared in the imperial crown, with horse and chariots he resigned her to, mean space, the high huge house with feast did flow of friends and neighbors, joined with the king, amongst whom did a heavenly poet sing and touch his harp, amongst whom likewise danced two, who in that dumb motion advanced, would prompt the singer what to play and sing. All this time, in the utter courts did stay, with horse and chariot, Telemachus, and Nestor's noble son, Pisistratus whom Aetianus, coming forth, descried, and being a servant to the king, most tried in care and his respect, he ran and cried, Guests! Jove kept Menelaus, two such men are for form of high Saturnius's strain. Inform your pleasure, if we unclose their horse from coach, or say they must dispose their way to some such house as may embrace their known arrival with more welcome grace. He, angry, answered, Thou didst never show thyself a fool, Boethides, till now. But now, as if turned child, a childish speech vents thy vain spirits. We ourselves now reach our home by much spent hospitality of other men. Nor know if Jove will try with other after wants our state again. And therefore, from our feast no more detain these welcome guests, but take their steeds from coach, and with attendance guide in their approach. This said... He rushed abroad and called some more tried in such service, that together bore up to the guests and took their steeds that sweat beneath their yokes from coach. At manger set, wheat and white barley gave them mixed and placed their chariot by a wall so clear it cast a light quite through it. And they then they led their guests to the divine house, which so fed their eyes at all parts with illustrious sights that admiration seized them. Like the lights the sun and moon gave, all the palace threw a luster through it, satiate with whose view down to the king's most bright kept baths they went, where handmaids did their services present, bathed, bombed them, shirts and well-napped weeds put on, and by Atrides' side set each his throne. Then did the handmaid royal water bring, and to a laver rich and glittering of massy gold poured which she placed upon a silver cauldron, into which might run the water as they washed. Then set she near a polished table, on which all the cheer the present could afford a reverend dame that kept, kept the larder set. A cook then came, and divers dishes, born thence, served again, furnished the board with bowls of gold, and then, his right hand given the guest, a tridy said, Eat, and be cheerful. Appetite allayed, I long to ask of what stock ye descend, for not from parents whose nameless, whose race nameless end, we must derive your offspring. Men obscure could get none such as you. The portraiture of Jove sustained and scepter-bearing kings, your either presence in his presence brings. An ox's fat chine, then they did, up, they did uplift, and set before the guests, which was a gift, sent as an honor to the king's own taste. 
They saw yet twas but to be eaten placed, and fell to it. But food and wine's care passed, Telemachus thus prompted Nestor's son, his ear close laying, to be heard of none. Consider, thou who whom most my mind esteems, the brass work here, how rich it is in beams, and how besides it makes the whole house sound, what gold and amber, silver, ivory, round is wrought about it. Out of doubt, the hall of Jupiter Olympius hath of all this state the like. How many infinities take up to admiration all men's sights. Atrides overheard and said, Loved son, no mortal must affect contention with Jove, whose dwellings are of endless date. Perhaps of men some one may emulate, or none my house of, or me. For I am one that many a grave extreme have undergone, much error felt by sea, until the eighth, eighth year, had never stay, but wandered far and near, Cyprus, Phoenicia, and Sidonia, and fetched the far-off Ethiopia, reached the Arambi of Arabia, and Libya, where the where where with horns use yean their lambs, which every full year use our three times dams, where ne neither king nor shepherd want comes near of cheese or flesh or sweet milk, all the year they ever milk their ewes, and here while I erred, gathering means to live, one murderously unawares unseen bereft my brother's life, chiefly betrayed by his abhorred wife. So hold I, not enjoining what you see, and of your fathers if they living be, you must have heard this, since my sufferings were so great and famous. From this palace here, so rarely well built, furnished so well, and sub substanced with such a precious deal of well-got treasures, banished by the doom of fate, and erring as I had no home. And now I have, and use it, not to take the entire delight it offers, but to make continual wishes, that a triple part of all it holds more wanting, so my heart were eased of sorrow. Taken for their deaths that fell in Troy by their revived breaths. And thus sit I here weeping, mourning still each least man lost, and sometimes make mine ill, in paying just tears for their loss, my joy. Sometimes I breathe my woes, for in annoy the pleasure soon admits satiety. But all these men's wants were not so were not so mine eye, though much they move me as one soul man's miss, for which my sleep and meat even loathsome is in his renewed thought, since no Greek hath won grace for such labors as Laertes' son hath wrought and suffered. To himself, not else, but future sorrows forging, to me hells for his long absence, since I cannot know in life or death detain him. Since such woe for his love, old Laertes, his wise wife, and poor young son sustains, whom new with life he left as sireless. This speech, grief to tears, poured from the son's lids on the earth, his ears told of the father did excite. Who kept his cheeks dry with his red weed as he wept? his both hands used therein. Atrides then began to know him, and did strife retain if he should let himself confess his sire, or, with all fitting circumstance, inquire. While this his thoughts disputed, forth did shine, like to the golden distaff decked divine, from her bed's high and odiferous room, Helen, to whom, of an elaborate loom, addressed the set a chair. Alcippe brought a piece of tapestry of fine wool wrought, Philo, a silver cabinet conferred, given by Alcandra, nuptially endeared to Lord Polybius, whose abode in Thebes the Egyptian city was, where wealth in heaps his famous house held, out of which did go, in gift to Trides, silver bathtubs two, two tripods, and of fine gold talents ten. His wife did likewise send to Helen then fair gifts, a distaff that of gold was wrought, and that rich cabinet that Philo brought, round and with gold ribbed, now a fine thread full, of which extended, crowned with finest wool, a violet gloss, the golden distaff lay. She took his, her state chair, and a footstool stay had for her feet, and of her husband thus asked to know all things. Is it known to us, King Menelaus, whom these men commend themselves for, that our court now takes to friend? I must affirm, be I deceived or no, I never saw man nor woman so like one another, as this man is like Ulysses' son. 
with admiration strike his looks my thoughts, that they should carry now power to persuade me thus, who did but know, when newly he was born, the form they bore. But tis his father's grace, who more and more his grace resembles, that makes me retain thought that he now is like Telemachus, then left by his sire, when Greece did undertake Troy's bold war for my impudency's sake. He answered, Now, wife, what you think I know, the true cast of his father's eye doth show in his eye's order. Both his head and hair, his hands and feet, his very father's are of whom, so well remembered, I should now acknowledge for me his continual flow of cares and perils, yet still patient. But I should too much move him, that doth vent such bitter tears for that which hath been spoke, which shunning soft show, see how he would cloak, and with his purple weed his weepings hide. 